The Cessna Aircraft Company was an American general aviation aircraft manufacturing corporation headquartered in Wichita, Kansas. Best known for small, piston-powered aircraft, Cessna also produced business jets. For many years the company was one of the highest volume producers of general aviation aircraft in the world. It was a subsidiary of the U.S. conglomerate Textron. In March 2014 Cessna ceased operations as a separate company and became a brand produced by Textron Aviation. History Clyde Cessna, a farmer in Rago, Kansas, built his own aircraft and flew it in June 1911, the first person to do so between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. Cessna started his wood and fabric aircraft ventures in Enid, Oklahoma, testing many of his early planes on the Salt Flats. When bankers in Enid refused to lend him more money to build his planes, he moved to Wichita. Cessna Aircraft was formed when Clyde Cessna and Victor Ruse became partners in the Cessna Ruse Aircraft Company in 1927. Ruse resigned just one month into the partnership selling back his interest to Cessna. In the same year, the Kansas Secretary of State approved dropping Ruse's name from the company name. The Cessna DC 6 earned certification on the same day as the stock market crash of 1929, October 29, 1929. In 1932, the Cessna Aircraft Company closed its doors due to the Great Depression. However the Cessna County Route 3 Custom Racer took its first flight in 1933. The plane won the 1933 American Air Race in Chicago and later set a new world speed record for engines smaller than 500 cubic inches by averaging 237 miles per hour, 381 kilometers per hour. Cessna's nephews, Dwayne Wallace and his brother Dwight, bought the company from Cessna in 1934. They reopened it and began the process of building it into what would become a global success. The Cessna C-37 was introduced in 1937 as Cessna's first seaplane when equipped with Edo floats. In 1940, Cessna received their largest order to date, when they signed a contract with the U.S. Army for 33 specially equipped Cessna T-50s. Later in 1940, the Royal Canadian Air Force placed an order for 180 T-50s. Cessna returned to commercial production in 1946, after the revocation of wartime production restrictions L48 with the release of the Model 120 and Model 140. The approach was to introduce a new line of all-metal aircraft that used production tools, dies and jigs rather than the hand-built process tube and fabric construction used before the war. The Model 140 was named by the U.S. Flight Instructors Association as the Outstanding Plane of the Year. In 1948, Cessna's first helicopter, the Cessna CH-1, received FAA type certification. In 1955, Cessna introduced the Cessna 172 in 1956. It became the most produced airplane in history. In 1960, Cessna affiliated itself with Reims Aviation of Reims, France. 
In 1963 Cessna produced its 50,000th airplane, a Cessna 172, Cessna's first business jet, the Cessna Citation I performed its maiden flight on September 15, 1969, Cessna produced its 100,000th single-engine airplane in 1975, in 1985 Cessna ceased to be an independent company. It was purchased by General Dynamics Corporation and became a wholly owned subsidiary. Production of the Cessna Caravan began. General Dynamics in turn, sold Cessna to Textron Inc. in 1992. Late in 2007, Cessna purchased the bankrupt Columbia Aircraft Company for $26.4 million and would continue production of the Columbia 350 and 400 as the Cessna 350 and Cessna 400 at the Columbia factory in Bend, Oregon. Chinese production controversy On November 27, 2007, Cessna announced the then new Cessna 162 would be built in the People's Republic of China by Shenyang Aircraft Corporation, which is a subsidiary of the China Aviation Industry Corporation I, a Chinese government owned consortium of aircraft manufacturers. Cessna reported that the decision was made to save money and also that the company had no more plant capacity in the United States at the time. Cessna received much negative feedback for this decision, with complaints centering on the recent quality problems with Chinese production of other consumer products, China's human rights record, exporting of jobs, and China's less than friendly political relationship with the United States. The customer backlash surprised Cessna and resulted in a company public relations campaign. In early 2009, the company attracted further criticism for continuing plans to build the 162 in China while laying off large numbers of workers in the United States. In the end the Cessna 162 was not a commercial success and only a small number were delivered before production was cancelled. Topic: 2008 to 2010 economic crisis. The company's business suffered notably during the late 2000s recession, laying off more than half its workforce between January 2009 and September 2010. On November 4, 2008, Cessna's parent company, Textron, indicated that Citation production would be reduced from the original 2009 target of 535, due to continued softening in the global economic environment and that this would result in an undetermined number of layoffs at Cessna on November 8, 2008, at the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association AOPA Expo, CEO Jack Pelton indicated that sales of Cessna aircraft to individual buyers had fallen but piston and turboprop sales to businesses had not. While the economic slowdown has created a difficult business environment, we are encouraged by brisk activity from new and existing propeller fleet operators placing almost 200 orders for 2009 production aircraft. Pelton stated, beginning in January 2009, a total of 665 jobs were cut at Cessna's Wichita and Bend, Oregon plants. 
The Cessna factory at Independence, Kansas, which builds the Cessna piston-engined aircraft and the Cessna Mustang, did not see any layoffs, but one-third of the workforce at the former Columbia Aircraft Facility in Bend was laid off. This included 165 of the 460 employees who built the Cessna 350 and 400. The remaining 500 jobs were eliminated at the main Cessna Wichita plant. In January 2009, the company laid off an additional 2,000 employees, bringing the total to 4,600. The job cuts included 120 at the Bend, Oregon, facility reducing the plant that built the Cessna 350 and 400 to fewer than half the number of workers that it had when Cessna bought it. Other cuts included 200 at the Independence, Kansas, plant that builds the single-engine Cessnas and the Mustang, reducing that facility to 1,300 workers. On April 29, 2009, the company suspended the Citation Columbus program and closing the Bend, Oregon, facility. The Columbus program was finally cancelled in early July 2009. The company reported, "...upon additional analysis of the business jet market related to this product offering, we decided to formally cancel further development of the Citation Columbus." With the 350 and 400 production moving to Kansas, the company indicated that it would lay off 1,600 more workers, including the remaining 150 employees at the Bend plant and up to 700 workers from the Columbus program. In early June 2009, Cessna laid off an additional 700 salaried employees, bringing the total number of layoffs to 7,600, which was more than half the company's workers at the time. The company closed its three Columbus, Georgia, manufacturing facilities between June 2010 and December 2011. The closures included the new 100,000 square foot, 9,300 square meters facility that was opened in August 2008 at a cost of $25 million, plus the Macaulay Propeller Systems plant. These closures resulted in total job losses of 600 in Georgia. Some of the work was relocated to Cessna's Independence, Kansas, or Mexican facilities. Cessna's parent company, Textron, posted a loss of $8 million in the first quarter of 2010, largely driven by continuing low sales at Cessna, which were down 44%. Half of Cessna's workforce remained laid off and CEO Jack Pelton stated that he expected the recovery to be long and slow. In September 2010, a further 700 employees were laid off, bringing the total to 8,000 jobs lost. CEO Jack Pelton indicated this round of layoffs was due to a stalled and lackluster economy and noted that while the number of orders cancelled for jets had been decreasing new orders had not met expectations. Pelton added, Our strategy is to defend and protect our current markets while investing in products and services to secure our future, but we can do this only if we succeed in restructuring our processes and reducing our costs. Topic 2010s. On May 2, 2011, CEO Jack Pelton retired. The new CEO, Scott A. Ernest, started on May 31, 2011. Ernest joined Textron after 29 years at GE, where he had most recently served as vice president and general manager, global supply chain for GE Aviation. 
Ernest previously worked for Textron CEO Scott Donnelly when both worked at GE. In September 2011, the Federal Aviation Administration proposed a $2.4 million fine against the company for its failure to follow quality assurance requirements while producing fiberglass components at its plant in Chihuahua, Mexico. Excess humidity meant that the parts did not cure correctly and quality assurance did not detect the problems. The failure to follow procedures resulted in the delamination in flight of a 7 feet meters section of one Cessna 400's wing skin from the SPA while the aircraft was being flown by an FAA test pilot. The aircraft was landed safely. The FAA also discovered 82 other aircraft parts that had been incorrectly made and not detected by the company's quality assurance. The investigation resulted in an emergency airworthiness directive that affected 13 Cessna 400s. Since March 2012, Cessna has been pursuing building business jets in China as part of a joint venture with Aviation Industry Corporation of China. AVIC. The company stated that it intends to eventually build all aircraft models in China, saying, the agreements together pave the way for a range of business jets, utility single-engine turboprops and single-engine piston aircraft to be manufactured and certified in China." In late April 2012 the company added 150 workers in Wichita as a result of anticipated increased demand for aircraft production. Overall they have cut more than 6,000 jobs in the Wichita plant since 2009. In March 2014 Cessna ceased operations as a company and instead became a brand of Textron Aviation. <laughs> Marketing initiatives During the 1950s and 1960s Cessna's marketing department followed the lead of Detroit automakers and came up with many unique marketing terms in an effort to differentiate its product line from their competitions. Other manufacturers and the aviation press widely ridiculed and spoofed many of the marketing terms, but Cessna built and sold more aircraft than any other manufacturer during the boom years of the 1960s and 1970s. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Company terminology. Cessna marketing terminology includes Paralift flaps, large Fowler flaps Cessna introduced on the 170B in 1952, replacing the narrow cord plane flaps then in use. Lando Matic, in 1956, Cessna introduced sprung steel tricycle landing gear on the 172. The marketing department chose Lando Matic to imply that these aircraft were much easier to land and take off than the preceding conventional landing gear equipped Cessna 170. They even went as far as to say pilots could do drive up takeoffs and drive in landings, implying that flying these aircraft was as easy as driving a car. In later years some Cessna models had their steel sprung landing gear replaced with steel tube gear legs. The 206 retains the original spring steel landing gear today. Omnivision, the rear windows on some Cessna singles, starting with the 182 and 210 in 1962, the 172 in 1963 and the 150 in 1964. 
The term was intended to make the pilot feel visibility was improved on the notably poor visibility Cessna line. The introduction of the rear window caused in most models a loss of cruise speed due to the extra drag, while not adding any useful visibility. Cushioned power, the rubber mounts on the cowling of the 1967 model 150, in addition to the rubber mounts isolating the engine from the cabin. Omni flash, the flashing beacon on the tip of the fin that could be seen all around. Open view, this referred to the removal of the top section of the control wheel in 1967 models. These had been rectangular, they now became ram's horn shaped, thus not blocking the instrument panel as much. Quick scan, Cessna introduced a new instrument panel layout in the 1960s and this buzzword was to indicate Cessna's panels were ahead of the competition. Navomatic, the name of the Cessna autopilot system, which implied the system was relatively simple. Camber lift, a marketing name used to describe Cessna aircraft wings starting in 1972 when the aerodynamics designers at Cessna added a slightly drooped leading edge to the standard NACA 2412 airfoil used on most of the light aircraft fleet. Writer Joe Christie described the name as stupid and added is there any other kind of lift? Stablia tip – Cessna started commonly using wingtip fuel tanks, carefully shaped for aerodynamic effect rather than being tubular shaped. Tip tanks do have an advantage of reducing free surface effect of fuel affecting the balance of the aircraft in rolling maneuvers. Topic: Aircraft models. As of July 2018, Textron Aviation is producing the following Cessna models: Cessna 172 high wing, single piston engined, four seat aircraft in production since the 1950s. More Cessna 172s have been built than any other aircraft. Cessna 182 high wing, single piston engined, four seat aircraft in production since 1996 was originally produced between 1956 and 1985. Cessna 206 high wing, single piston engined, six seat utility aircraft in production since 1962. Cessna 208 high wing turboprop utility aircraft in production since 1984. Cessna Citation family, twin engined business jets. Cessna 525 light business jet produced since 1991 Cessna 560XL, small to medium business jet produced since 1996 Cessna 680 mid-sized business jet produced since 2004 Cessna 750 long range medium business jet aircraft produced since 1996. 